Hurricane Otis killed more than two dozen people when it plowed into Acapulco last week, many of whom learned too late just how big that storm would be. Yeah, so how did a tropical storm turn into a Category 5 hurricane so quickly? Well, CBS News correspondent Tom Hansen says it's all in the water. Hurricane Otis stunned scientists with wind speeds jumping by 115 miles per hour to 165 in a single day slamming into Acapulco. The National Hurricane Center called it a nightmare scenario, a nightmare caused by rapid intensification. That's when a storm's sustained winds increase by at least 35 miles per hour in a day or less. I just didn't think it was going to be that bad. I really didn't. Just another storm. Fisherman Matt Simonson lost his Florida business in last year's Hurricane Ian, another storm that rapidly intensified. The water was coming in so much. It was almost up to my chest at that point. That's when I knew I, this was going to be very serious. When the wind started kicking up to the point that we could, it was too dangerous to go outside. No, this is the, this is the worst part. Simonson says he tried to ride out the storm at a marina, but the water rose so high, his only option was to board a 65-foot charter yacht. I felt I, got, I was at sea. That's how much water was there. Then it's almost like a... It's like a scene from a movie. I was shocked. Hurricane Ian slammed Fort Myers as a Category 4, flattening much of the coastal communities in its path and killing 156 people. It looked like a war zone. I was like, how could this even be possible? A recent study published in Scientific Reports shows this type of explosive growth is becoming more common, especially in the Atlantic. Scientists agree a warming planet is to blame because warmer water temperatures create stronger storms. Think of the ocean as the gas tank for the hurricane that is the engine. And the more high-octane fuel you give it, the more it is able to accelerate in terms of its maximum speed. And the fuel they use is the warm waters of the ocean. Dr. Rick Knapp is a meteorologist at the Weather Channel and the former director of the National Hurricane Center. We're talking about a lot of fuel with the ocean temps the way that they are. Yes, uh, we uh, would not see as strong a hurricanes if we didn't have the warm ocean. Uh, and Caribbean Sea and Gulf of Mexico. That is the fuel. NOAA is now sending drones in the air, on the water, and below the surface, hoping to better predict when the conditions could cause rapid intensification. NOAA researchers are also using AI to analyze that data quickly. Artificial intelligence is being examined to sift through all of that information coming from forecast models, helping us make more informed human forecasts based on all that uncertainty. But even with this cutting-edge technology, Otis's jump in ferocity defied forecast models, something communities both on the coast and inland rely on. Much of the country is vulnerable to the inland impacts, and that can mean inland flooding that could inundate entire communities like we saw with Ida. Tom Hansen, CBS News. Well, wow. according to the federal government, hurricanes are the most expensive type of extreme weather, causing an average of $20.3 billion in damage per storm. Now, Hurricane Ian ranked as one of the most expensive in U.S. history, $114 billion wow. in damage, Paula. And we certainly know very well around here how that ocean temperature, as Eric always says, it's jet fuel for yeah. the hurricane, and uh, you just hope it always weakens by the time it gets here.